a natty or bust mindset might put too much pressure on Ohio State when they step on the field in the fall. You are Locked On Buckeyes, your daily podcast on the Ohio State Buckeyes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Many of you are like me. You want to get rid of daylight savings time. I've been saying it for years, and it causes us to change in a way that we don't want to. And the Buckeyes currently having a natty or bust mindset will force them to change and play in a way that they've never played before. Welcome in, Buckeye fans, to a Tuesday edition of Locked On Buckeyes, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Jay Stevens, also the host of the Jay Stevens Podcast. And today's episode is brought to you by Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further? Ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Check them all out at NissanUSA.com. Joining us here on the show for the first time in a long time, it's Mo Murphy of the Up in Flames podcast of the Off the Ball Network. And Mo's been around here for quite a long time. And when I heard that Denzel Burke said, hey, this upcoming year is Natty or Bust, I knew we had to get one guy on the show to talk about it. That is Mo Murphy and Mo. When I heard Natty or Bust, I'm thinking I'm excited, but also they're putting a lot of pressure on themselves. Yeah, as they should. It, it, that's what this season is. Like, what else is there to do, man? It, everything's been handed to you now. Jim Harbaugh gone. You know what I'm saying? A lot of talent on that Michigan team is gone. That's a team that was in your way. Georgia looked vulnerable. They got beat last year. They're not these undefeated dogs at the end of the day. They can be beat. On paper, you got the best talent. You got the most talented roster in college football from top to bottom. Nobody is four deep at quarterback that you could, well, three and a half. I, Devin Brown could be a half. I'm sorry, no dis, no disrespect. But you you that deep at the quarterback position. You have an offensive coordinator that could be a head coach at a big-time program, but instead he's an offensive coordinator at your program. You got Ryan Day, who wins a lot of games. He wins a lot, a lot, a lot of games. Since he's been the head coach, he's won more games than almost everybody. But he just never won the big one. So it doesn't matter how many games he wins because he never really won. He never won the big one. He'd been there, got blew out, but he never won the big. You Everything is set up for Ohio State to win the national championship this year. Yes, and they know it. And they know it's going to be a disappointment. And that's why all them juniors came back to come play their senior season because they know what they got cooking and they know what they can do. They have to. They, they literally had to come back. Because they felt like they had unfinished business. I, I talked talk to you before, cover high school basketball. My high school basketball season just complete as far as covering it. And the team that we just watched play this past Saturday, there was a young freshman who's a videographer, put a, made a hype video, and it was titled Unfinished Business. Well, unfortunately, the Kokomo Wildcats lost to the number one team in the state in front of 9,200 people that were packed inside the Newcastle Fieldhouse. And I was like, wait. They said they had un unfinished business, but they didn't They didn't finish it. But also, they didn't have a chance to come back. The best player on the team is going to Kansas to play basketball next year. These young guys at Ohio State, they had an opportunity. Denzel Burke said he had a first or second round NFL draft grade. For most players, they're leaving and going to get that check. They're not going back to college. But he said, no, we got more things to do. He said, hey. I don't have any gold pants. I, I ain't beat Michigan. I, I don't have a Big Ten championship ring, which is still weird, bro, that that is the reality of this class. So all of a sudden you're saying now, hey, I came back. I want to beat. I want to get a pair of gold pants. I want to win the Big Ten championship. But aside from all that, Natty or bust, hey, as pressure, I think Denzel Burke is capable of handling the pressure and taking his game to another level. I really hope everybody else is. And Mo. I really hope they have the right quarterback this year because if not, I don't think you can win a national championship with a bad or even average quarterback. They're going to have the right quarterback. I'm going to tell you why. Who is it? Tell, tell everybody who you think it's going to be. Well, I think it's going to be Julian Sam, but all I know is one of them going to be the guy. I think it's going to be saying, though. Know, I think he's going to be the day one starter. We talked about this before the show. Um, I think he's going to be the day one starter. That's just me calling it a hot take, clip it up, you know, but uh, all I know is one of them going to be the guy, though. You got four. If one of them aren't the guy, 
you don't have a job midway through the season in the first place. So, like, it would be Maddie or Bust because we're expecting that one of these four are the guy that can take us there. And we, you know, Kyle McCord gone. Devin Brown decided to stay. That's fine. But we definitely don't expect him to be it. So now we got three other options that we're looking at that have come in from elsewhere, high school, Bama, Kansas State. One of those guys better be the guy. And if we have the guy with all the talent everywhere else, we're the best, we're the most talented roster from top to bottom. Do we have our flaws? Yes, 100%. Do we want to see those flaws be fixed? 100%, but so does everybody else. But talent for talent, especially in the skilled positions, Ohio State is the deepest roster in college football, and everybody knows it, but they got to shake that stigma of who cares. It, 2019, a lot of people said the same thing. Might be the most talented roster. is one of the best, most talented defenses from top to bottom. But one of the most talented rosters, top to bottom, end up losing, don't even play for the national championship unless you wins it. Like, you've been in these predicaments before where people look at this team like, man, oh, man, they might win, and you haven't done it yet. So at the end of the day, it is national championship or bust, but I think this is the biggest year because I think some jobs can be gone. And who's to say Chip Kelly don't just slide right up in it? I want to hold that off to – no, I'm not going to do that. Let's just, just dive into it because I was going to ask you about that too. Let's just say they don't win the national championship. Chip Kelly might be the replacement for Ryan Day as head coach. I, I'm not the highest on Chip Kelly as running a head coach, being a, running a football team in college right now at this level. However, Chip Kelly has enough experience. He can compile a phenomenal coaching staff around him that kind of fill in the pieces where he is not excellent at. Ryan Day's doing that right now. But it could be too little too late if they don't win the national championship. And I'm only saying this for conversation's sake. I do think Ohio State has a legitimate shot to win the natty in the upcoming season. But if they don't, man, imagine Ryan Day's buddy taking his job because Ryan Day couldn't get the job done. That'd be wild. It would be wild, but think about it. Think where it makes sense. Where else would it make sense to bring Chip Kelly in as offensive coordinator? I know Ryan Day looking to give up the – play call and job I get that but where does it make sense for Chip Kelly and I know I know we could get I don't even want to do that but we could get deeper into the whole NIL thing and how it's making head coaches think I get that but just from a football perspective let's take NIL out of the equation of why would Chip Kelly take that if there wasn't a possibility because think about it he get to come in he got dogs on offense everywhere yes Ohio State hey what do they love what do the boosters love? they love points Yes. They love points. And so if Chip Kelly comes in, right, he's the offensive coordinator, and these offensive guys love him, even if Day's gone, guess who doesn't leave? Majority of those guys on the roster that are supposed to be there next year. Majority of those guys stay if, if Chip Kelly take that head coaching position. And I'm not saying that that's going to happen. I'm not right. saying that's the plan. I'm just thinking, like, playing devil's advocate, what if it is, then that's how you got to look at it is, like, man, we won't lose a lot of transfers, at least on the offensive side. If Chip Kelly takes over and we want to put up points, a deadly offense can take you a lot of places and a deadly offense brings in a lot of money at the end of the day. A lot of points bring in a lot of money. And so at the end of the day, that could be the status quo and hope that Chip Kelly can align. He could probably keep a lot of the staff at Ohio State too. Like they probably wouldn't lose much and feel like they just changed that head coach and maybe that'll make a difference and we won't have to go through what like Bama went through. And I'm not saying losing Ryan Day, you wouldn't get better a better coach, but still a lot of people come play for Ryan day. So like you're going to lose a lot of those guys at the end of the day. Ohio State did a phenomenal job of making some right changes in the off season to make them and put them in the right spot to be a favorite right now to win the national championship. We're going to discuss what Ohio state must do in the season to win the natty. That's coming up next. This episode is brought to you by Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further? Ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Our friends at Nissan have a lineup of SUVs with the capabilities to take your adventure to the next level. The 2024 Nissan Rogue is perfect for the city drives and great escapes. Gone are the days of connecting your phone. Google Assistant, Google Maps, and Google Play Store are built right into the 12.3-inch HD touchscreen infotainment system. The 2024 Rogue is a perfect mid-size crossover for your next adventure. The 2024 Nissan Armada will change what you expect from a full-size SUV. Picture a rugged, 
4 by 4 that can seat up to eight in first-class luxury and style. To bigger and explore further in the 2024 Armada. Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. This episode is also brought to you by Billiards Plus. Billiards Plus has the best selection of pool tables, game tables, shuffleboard tables, and more, and the best service in Central Ohio. Billiards Plus carries grills that have up to 30-year warranties. That's right, a grill with a 30-year warranty. Everything you need for in-home and backyard entertainment is at Billiards Plus. And the grills, whether you like charcoal or gas or wood-fired, Billiards Plus has the perfect setup for all grillers. They are family-owned and operated. And when you talk to the staff at Billiards Plus, you know you're talking to an expert who won't steer you wrong. No matter the season, Billiards Plus has you covered for all your indoor and outdoor entertainment needs. Kenny, Sarah, and the whole staff will always go above and beyond to give you the best customer service in the industry. Billiards Plus, visit their showroom on Dublin Center Drive in Dublin. Mo, one of my favorite off-season moves that the Buckeyes have made so far is moving Sonny Styles from safety to linebacker. In any given year, you're 6'4", 230, 235, you're automatically a linebacker. But the Buckeyes last year, a lot of it was you had Steel Chambers and Tommy Eichenberg. So do you want to put a true sophomore at safety or a linebacker? If you put him at linebacker, you ruffle some feathers. If you put him at safety, you ain't hurt nobody's feelings at all. Ultimately, safety last year, linebacker here. And about all, all the moves that they have made, that is one of my favorites. I, I know Caleb Downs is there and Juckins, don't get me wrong. But based on the guys that were currently on the roster from last year that stayed, that move from a Sunny Styles from safety to linebacker to me puts the Buckeyes defense in a whole bet a whole lot better spot right now than it was this time last year. Oh uh, yeah, I agree. I mean, it's like, man, they made so many moves. It's like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's really, you know, you can go one way or the other, but nah, I agree because it's like it was a move you made for your own player. Yes. Like, it's a different type of move. That's a that's a move acknowledging that this guy will be better in this position. Like that's a coaching move. Bringing in these guys and you know, that's an NIL move, a coaching move, a little recruiting tactic, whatever it may be. You brought the talent, but you you evaluated the talent that was on your roster and felt like it was a time for a change and set him up for success. So, I think that's why it's the biggest deal. You could bring in all this talent from all over, but I mean, you've had a bunch of talent, too, and if you ain't getting the best out of it or putting them in the best position to succeed, what makes us think all these other talented guys ain't going to fall to the same wayside? So, I think – and I think Sonny Styles going to be a heck of a linebacker, too. Oh, my God. Because he can play linebacker in coverage. Like, we know he can cover. He plays safety. So, like, he can cover, and now he's a linebacker, which is probably going to be – like, he might be a first-round pick type of guy in that spot. So, yeah. Yeah, he might – Yeah. This dude gonna be man. We've been waiting. Yeah, they are gonna unleash him. They have they, to. They oh, they, they have are. to. They are. Man, jobs are on the line. They are. Jobs are on the line. I'm telling you, they know I'll, it. Why is that love super bus? Jobs on the line. They know it. And the play, they they passing it on. They passing that feeling on to the players. I'm telling you, the way Ryan they they these players right now, especially, it's not the young guys coming in. No, it's the guys that have been here the whole time. They are hearing and seeing. Stuff different than they've ever heard or seen from Ryan Day, from Knowles, from anybody in that building. They are seeing and hearing a different type of energy. And so they are reciprocating it to the media when they are talking because they are getting that feeling. They understand this class, you know, respect is on the line, which our coach's job could go along with this. These other guys, like jobs are on the line. Respect is on the line and they know it. And so how do you get your respect? You win it all. How you shut everybody up? How you, how you, hey, man, we beat Michigan and we won it all in the same year. Right after Michigan did it to you, too, beat you, won the Big Ten Championship and won the National Championship, you turn around and give them the same favor? Yeah, they, they'll take the whole, we didn't have hardball, that's cool. But the rest of the country going to have to understand because we ain't going to be playing Michigan in the playoffs. And it's a 12-team playoff. So, like, it's going to be a different type. How you get your respect back? How you get the last three years not to matter? by doing everything that does matter from here on out, which is beating Michigan, winning a Big Ten championship, and winning the national championship. And it's that or bust for this class and Ryan Day and his future at Ohio State. And he know it. 
I know he knows it. If we know it, if you know it, if people you talk to, if other reporters that you talk to know it, there's no way he does it. If they're rumbling, it gets inside the building. We know the reporters ask. They be yes. asking these type of questions. I mean, yes. they, even the decent reporters, we the great reporters really get to it, and they they might not answer them questions. But <laughs> if the decent one go be like, "Do you feel like your job's on the line?" Because the way I'm getting this feeling inside this media room, your job might be on the line. Like you, you got to just pick up the energy. A decent reporter will pick that up and be able. Maybe you, somebody got to ask that question. So if all of us know it feel it that way as fans or whatever it may be. And, and he's been there long enough that it'd be justified. And I don't want to fire Ryan Day. I do want Ryan Day to win the national championship. I want Ryan Day to stay as Ohio State head coach. I want him to do everything it takes to be, continue to be the Ohio State head coach. So yes, I would love to sign him to a 10-year extension because he won us a national championship and did all of that this year. I would love that. But I'm just, if he doesn't do that, it would be justified. We, it ain't two or three years into the project. What we on? He's been here for what? Seven? Eight? No, it's about to be your five. Jesus. Oh, but he was office think. coordinator for like a year or two. A couple years. Yeah, a couple years. Yeah, yeah. seven total. Seven okay. total. Seven five as a head coach. Five, yeah, five as a head coach. Okay. Yeah, we would give well, you. Hold a, on, hold on. 1920. Is this five or six? 1920. He's been here for a long time. He's been here for a minute. That's what I'm saying. He's he been here for a minute. He came in the 19 season, but that was like 18, 19. Yeah, yeah. It was the 2018, 19 season. So like, yeah, it's like year seven. He's going into like year six or seven. So if you ain't won nothing with all this talent that you got that's producing in the NFL as well, yeah, you got to go. It's okay. Like, it happens. You you set that standard when you put that type of talent on the field. Like, I know people will be like, some people are being unrealistic with Ohio State, but like, no. That's why they get crapped on by like the SEC and stuff like that too because they be like, y'all end up getting all that talent and don't do nothing with it. They know how talented Ohio State is year in and year out, but that's why they'd be like, man, y'all can't compete against the best, though. Y'all don't be beating Bama consistent. Like, y'all won't beat them on the big stage. You know, every time Ohio State get the time to get respect in them big moments, they be losing, too. Mm -hmm. Like, we, we be losing them games now. So even when we pummeled Clemson and then got smacked by Alabama, like, yeah, y'all beat Clemson. That's cute. But the SEC came rolling through. Like, so you got to get you got to get the big one, man. You got to. Like and and if he does that, we know he's gonna get ten years. And, and I I will I will love to know Ryan, give him a lifetime contract. Yeah, I don't know, just just because that means he did everything he was supposed to do, and then it's only gonna build from there. And then I think a couple more down the line over the next ten years would come through. You know, this reminds me of something I told you earlier. I'm not trying to compare Urban and Ryan Day. Like I don't want to go back and forth. They're two different individuals, two different coaching styles. Don't want to do that. But Urban. hearing Natty or bust. We'll say it again. Urban hand picked them, though. That's why they correlate. He, he, that's, that's why that's why you're allowed to compare them because he picked them. That guy that you want to give all the praise picked this guy to succeed him. Well, let me get a little bit further with since Ryan, Urban Meyer, I forgot, he did hand pick Ryan Day. The one thing I think about this year, if you're seeing Natty or Bust in March at the beginning of spring practice, you, you know it's going to be intense in practices right now. And what's going to happen, Mo, the next time that portal window opens up, that pressure I talked about earlier, it might be too much for some players. Because Ohio State might recruit some kids that you say, oh, they're Ohio State material. You get them on campus, they're not Ohio State material. And they they leave. I'm not saying it's a bad thing to, to, to transfer. I am not saying that. The portal is a tool. Players use, use a tool all the time. But this is a great way, Mo to weed out those guys that aren't up to par, up to the standard that is currently at Ohio State, which is perfect. Not everybody's fit for Alabama, Georgia, other top schools in the country, and not everybody's fit at Ohio State. So this right now, having this pressure on you right now, is going to weed out some bad apples that could eventually be cancers inside the locker room. Yeah, I mean, since you say that, and here's my thing, you're going to get that sense in, in spring. Oh, yeah. Nobody cares nothing about next year, two no. years from now. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Nobody, I'm telling. So it's going to be like when we weed them out, man, you might not have ever been. You might have been in our plans for next year. Yeah. But we so focused on this year. That's it. It's going to be hard for us to continue to preach that message. Either you got to understand it and be a dog with us and keep fighting or go ahead and go. But we don't care about nothing matters past. Th this is an all-in year. 
They said that when they went and got everybody in their mama. They went and got Caleb Downs and Judkins and Will. We went and got two quarterbacks out the transfer portal. Not one, but two. Like, you went and got all these players. You you moved Sonny Styles, the linebacker. Like, you're acknowledging you got Denzel Burke in them, the, uh, your entire recru uh, recruiting class dang near to come back except for a couple. Like, you got everybody to buy into this year. Abuka probably could have went. Like, it's probably better for him to come back because he's definitely a first-round wide receiver next year. But he could have went and got drafted in the third round this year, yeah. third, fourth round. And he and then he would have overplayed his worth in the draft. And he would have got paid a nice little amount of money. Like, just he was injured. But he came back. Like, a lot of these guys came back and said, man, we ain't done nothing yet. And you can tell Marvin Harrison Jr. still being around the team. You can tell he has that feeling. But, hey, he got to go to the league. Like, yeah. it, there's levels. You know, you know, this is a top five pick we talking about. There's levels to this. I ain't mad at him for not coming back. I know he yeah. feel it because he's still around the team. He's still mm -hmm. there. He's spring mm -hmm. practice, so he do feel that. But, man, you got to make the best move for you, and I'm always take take that bag. Take take the bag. Take the, you know, like like Jeff says, who will be on, you know, our guy Jeff Hunt. Like he say, man, get to that next contract as quick as possible. Yes, sir. That's it. Get to that next contract. So Marvin Harrison, I know he wanted to come back. And if he did, <sighs> Man, I would have loved him, but I'd be like, man, go go get the bag, man. Like, but he gonna cry if we win the national championship. <laughs> he gonna cry that. He gonna cry that Sunday when I asked him. And hey, you might cry too. Oh, I'm. I'm we not talking about me. Yeah, we 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 know. Yeah, I'm gonna cry. Yeah, we win one. I'm gonna cry. Yeah, I got to. Might have to pull Mo on the post game after that. After that. After that win, and be like, hey Mo, what's going on? Just tears right down his face. Just Fine. I can't talk. I'm so happy. Yeah, Just coming right down his face the whole time. Yeah, it, it'd be that kind of scene, man. It was like that almost like when we won 10 years ago. Yeah, I ain't cry, but it was like, oh, man, like I don't even know what to feel. It's a weird feeling. You know, there's a thought that came into my head that Mo mentioned is going to be a 12-team playoff in the upcoming season that has a connection with the 2014 team. We'll tie those two things together coming up next. This episode is brought to you by Fear and Duel Sportsbook. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on once again. Visit FanDuel.com slash L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. You know, Mo, when they had the introdu introduction of the four-team playoff, I don't think a lot of people thought or even knew what Ohio State's team would be that year when Braxton Miller went down that year before the season even started. You're playing your backup quarterback all year. He only has – truly only loses one game. He got hurt in the Michigan game, uh, lost early in the year week one or week two. He, he lost Tech. season opener against Virginia Tech. And then all of a sudden they run the table. You mm -hmm. have another quarterback come in, and then Cardo Jones did what he did, and they won the national championship. Mm -hmm. But that was the first year of a four-team playoff, the first year of a new format to decide a national champion. I am not saying these two things are actually going to happen, but – Let's just say the first year of a new format having a playoff and a expanded playoff and a new format to figure out who the national champion is going to be, that Ohio State's the first team to win the national championship in a 12-team playoff. You give it, you give a playoff, hey, Ohio State will win to be the first to win a four team, be the first to win a 12 team. It's just hypothetical, just a spitball and just speculating. But wouldn't it be great if that were the case that Ohio State won the first 14 playoff and the first 12 team playoff? Are they going to wait to switch it to 16 another 10 years, which means I'll have to wait another 10 years to see Ohio State win the national championship? <laughs> no, like, bro, they might change it to 14 in a couple years. I'm not joking about that. Like, but I'm just saying, like, it's just going to be the adjusting <laughs> national champions when, it, when things change. We pounce on it right away. And, and, and I mean, if that's cool, but they just got to keep adding teams to the playoffs every few years. So I know I can see this every few yeah. years. But, I mean, that could be the case because, I mean, but it just, it aligns with the fact, like, I think 2014, you know, it takes a little bit of luck. Like, there was some luck within that run. Um, 
obviously the talent as well, but there was some luck within that run. And then even this year, like it's going to take some luck. Like yeah. you were able to acquire all this talent and stuff, but I'm not saying no national champion is like never earns it. Like it just, there's luck along the way. Like even if it's a dude was wide open at the end of the game and you lucky they didn't make that play. Like just something simple like that. I ain't saying that you got to be lucky on some like crazy stuff, but it does. And I think if between the talent, luck, and the head coach, if they want it bad enough, if they want it more than everybody, they're more talented than everybody. So, like, it just – all this comes down to, like, can y'all win the national championship or not? It's like, that simple. We, this is why – but this is why they have to feel this way. Because job, it's just, it go, jobs are on the line. There's a different type of pressure this year. They they This year – if there wasn't that type of pressure and people felt safe, Caleb Downs doesn't come to Ohio State. I don't even know if Jukkis comes to Ohio State. I don't think pe- I don't think we outbid a lot of these people for these star players. But I think because it's all in on this year and and pockets got, you know, pockets got emptied to get some of these guys here and all this. Like we are going to do everything. We love you. We want to see you succeed. We are going to give you everything that you could possibly need. To win a national championship, we're gonna give you everything. Everything. In all in all facets of football. We're gonna give you great coaches, coordinators, uh uh players, uh just anything you need. We're gonna give it to you for yeah. this year. You 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 do right by us, you take it care of for life. You're gonna get this whatever extension you want. You know, you're gonna get a blank check. Here you go. You don't, you're gone. And I think it's it's just that simple. And everybody knows it. And Ryan Day knows it. And so he's he's going to have a different type of energy all spring. But my thing is, man, nobody cares what you do. This is what sucks about this conversation. Nothing matters until week 13 of college football, conference championship weekend of college football, and the multiple weekends of playoffs. Nothing Ohio State does winning-wise really matters until I mean, I know they got Oregon, they got some good teams on the schedule prior, but you win those games, nobody gonna care. You walk into that week 13 game, 11 and 0, nobody's gonna care if you, nope. unless you walk out of there 12 and 0 and then go win the conference championship. And it don't matter if you gotta play Michigan again or you gotta play Oregon again, it doesn't matter. Go win. Nothing matters till week 13 and beyond for Ohio State, especially if they continue to be undefeated. Now, if they lose it. It matters because you might not make it to week 13 if you Ryan Day. But if you win in games, nobody's everybody's still going to be like, man, we still ain't beat Michigan. Y'all still got Michigan because we did this the past year. We beat Notre Dame, beat Wisconsin on the road. Like, we won all these games. It was like, still got to play Michigan and lose to Michigan. So nothing matters till week 13. If you, as long as you keep a zero in the loss column, nothing else matters until week 13. So I do believe that there's a realistic opportunity for Ryan Day to potentially get fired in the middle of the season if things just don't go right. Now, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but if things are just really, 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 really bad and they have a new athletic director, I don't think a new AD wants to have that happen under his watch for the first time he's there at the school when you think about the recent history. Now, I'm not, I don't think it's going to happen, but it's possible that Ryan Day could be gone in the middle of the year. Are you... Think of the same thing that Ryan Day, if things just go really, really bad, he could be let go, relieved of his duties in the middle of the season. And we're going to close the show out with this, Mo. Yeah, I think so. Like, I mean, what's a four and two start? Ah, it changes. Three and three. A three and three start out the gate? Yeah, because I forget. Like, four and two, if you – and I don't remember our schedule top to bottom, but four and two, like, you still could be okay if you never lost for the rest of the season. Like, you still could be okay being a 10-2 and two team. Didn't win your conference, but you could be okay because we still have the goal of winning the national championship. Right. You pissed, right. but either way. But, like, 3-3, three and three, things are bad. Like, yeah, I think at 3-3, three and three, you got to get up out of there. I don't think we'll start 3-3. Three and three. I don't think – we, No, no, same, never same. Get that. You're never going to get that type – we don't have that type of schedule. Like, we didn't schedule our first six weeks to be even possibly looking at 3-3. Three and three. I think we're, at worst, looking at 5-1, and one, so – um, but still, like, if it went that way and it got that bad, like, yeah, it'd be like it has to, three and three is all all hell broke loose at Ohio State. So 
that would be his worst. Like what you said, it would have to be that bad. Like three and three out the gate through week six is that bad and all hell broke loose and he got to go. Yeah, I'm right there, man. It's weird because we're having this conversation now and I don't think it's going to happen. I think the roster is too talented. Got too many good players on there. And the next time we have Mo Mo on the show, we might talk about wide receivers and the running backs and other things like that. But I love having Mo on the show to have this specific topic. Mo, I actually told Jeff, the last time I had Jeff on the show, I was like, hey, man, I got to get Mo back on. I have to. And the moment I heard Natty or Bust, Mo was the guy. Mo, love having you on the show. Got to get you back on once again. You can follow, follow Mo on X at Mo underscore Cheese 15. Before I go any further, congrats, bro, on covering that rugby game, rugby match, excuse me. Um, you, I saw the email you posted on Facebook, and I was like, my guy's doing big things. So I don't know if you want to say anything about that, but publicly, bro, congratulations. That's a big moment. Oh, no, nah, I appreciate it, bro. You know, we had talked about it off camera. So, yeah, I definitely appreciate it. Hey, man, you know, probably being on this show had a little something to do with it, too. Like, you know, a lot of people watch this show and get feedback. So, you know, I definitely I'll look in the comments when I do be on the show. So anybody that does listen and comment, I do look and see it. And so, like, I do appreciate I'll be getting love when I be on the show. So I appreciate when y'all do show love. I don't necessarily interact, but I do go look. So if y'all want to leave a good comment or if y'all want to make me upset and leave a negative comment, I'll respond to negative uh, topics. Then y'all leave a comment on the show too. But I do be seeing them. I do be seeing the love you get on the show too. <laughs> appreciate that, man. Once again, follow Mo on X at Mo underscore cheese 15. Follow his show, the Up and Plains podcast. Him, Jeff Hunt, and Chris LeBron have the OG3. I listen to the show you guys did recently i love that definitely try to get that um when you got the speed as well you can follow me on x at j stevens 07 guys it's locked on buckeyes on a tuesday got a few more shows left this week we'll see you next time